Hey, what's up? David Wood here for TheBlendMode.com and welcome to another exciting GIMP tutorial. In today's GIMP tutorial, we are going to be creating an abstract spiral weave lattice effect. It looks like this. So here is one example. This is the closest to the original tutorial. And here's another one. It looks pretty cool. And a third one with uh, some light rays kind of shooting out. It looks like there's a light source behind it. All pretty cool stuff, super easy to do. Let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going to create a new image. So we're making a 1920 by 1920 canvas and hitting OK. And the color doesn't matter because we're going to immediately fill this in. We're going to go to Filters, Render, Noise, Solid Noise. And in Solid Noise, we can take the X and Y size and increase it a little bit. And take the detail, increase that as well. Probably between 4 and 5, that should work really well. And hit OK. And then we're going to go to Filters, Render, Noise, Difference, Clouds. We're going to brighten this up a little bit. We'll go to our colors, levels, and we're going to grab the white highlight slider, and we're just going to push this up a little bit. And the gray midtone slider, we can push that up a little bit as well. And we'll hit OK. From here, we want to make sure that we don't have an alpha channel on this image. So right click on it in your layers dialog and remove alpha channel. Then go to filters, blur, zoom motion blur. And zoom motion blur is really fun. It makes it look like something is flying towards the camera. We're going to take this image and we're going to take the blurring factor and we're going to reverse it. So instead of blurring outward, it's going to blur inward. And that's just going to kind of pinch the, the middle of this image a little bit and remove some of the uh, detail there. So we're just going to take the blurring factor, reverse it, probably about uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, somewhere around there. Nothing too crazy. And hit OK. And then we're going to go to Filters, Distorts, Whirl, and Pinch. And right now, Whirl and Pinch has a 90 degree counterclockwise angle, and you can see it kind of spinning around in the center a little bit. We can also take the uh, radius and we can change that. And the radius affects how large this area that's being spun is. The default doesn't quite touch the edges of the image. So this is personal preference. It'll depend on how you want this to look. You, need, you can either leave it like that, or you can increase the radius if you would prefer that these edges where the circle would hit are actually being distorted as well. You notice in the corners here, because it is distorting in a radius in a circle, that these corners of the square are not being affected by it. So that's personal preference, how you want to set that up. The pinch will pinch the image in the center and basically warp the surrounding pixels towards the center of it. Kind of like that. And obviously the whirl angle controls how much it actually spins this around. So but the default settings don't look too bad. I'm going to take the whirl and I'm just going to increase it to about 150, 160 so that it has a little bit tighter spiral. And then I'm going to take the pinch and I'm just going to pinch this a little bit to squeeze the middle together because without the pinch, the center of the image is not completely whirled around and it can leave it kind of static and I don't want that. About 0.15 works for this. The radius, I'm not going to change it on this one. We'll hit OK. And then we're going to take this layer and uh, we have an option here. If we want to have a, a kind of bright center like this image does, we need to take this center and we need to just grab our gradient tool. We'll go foreground to transparent. Make sure that it's white and make sure the shape is set on radial. And from the center here, we can just kind of make a circle, kind of like that. And this is this is just an optional step if you wanted to have that bright circle. I'm not going to worry about it in this case, but if you wanted it to kind of have a, like a center light source like this one does, you would add that. And uh, it would also help in this example here if you had sort of a brighter area in the middle here where the light rays are supposed to come from. But in my case, I'm not going to use it for this example. We're just going to take this layer, duplicate it, and then go to Filters, Reshow, Whirl, and Pinch. 
And under the presets, the last used will be the one we just had run. We're going to click on it so that it sets it back up the same way. But we're going to take the whirl and we're going to reverse this. So instead of 150, we're going to go negative 150. And you'll see that it puts it back to the original image before we actually ran the whirl and pinch filter. So obviously we don't want that. We want it to whirl in the opposite direction. So if it's already negative 150, we need to go another negative 150 and set it up around negative 300. Something like that should work pretty good. The pinch, I'm actually going to increase this just a little bit. So it whirls the center a little more. And the radius, I'm going to turn that up so that more of these edges are being affected. Nothing crazy. I think that probably looks pretty good. And hit OK. OK, so now we've got two images, one swirling clockwise, the other counterclockwise. And this is where the actual magic happens. We're going to take this top copy and we're going to change the blend mode to lighten only. And you can see right away that now these different whirling patterns here, they actually intersect with each other and kind of overlap. And it looks like a weave effect. We can either leave it on light and only, or if we want to make this other example here where it looks like there's a light source behind it, we're going to set the blend mode from light and only to darken only. And it'll look like that. And obviously it needs some color correction to properly stand out. But now it actually looks like these pockets here of light are in the background and these strands are now dark where they intersect and overlap, making it look like they're shadowed on this side facing the camera compared to the light and only. This one, you can see these dark pockets actually look like they're in the background and these there's a light source on our side facing this weave pattern. And if we reverse it to the dark and only, then it's the other way around. Pretty cool. I'm going to make a copy of both of these just so we can kind of play with it. So light and only, I'm going to make a new from visible and then hide it and then take this layer, set it to dark and only, make a new from visible and just put it on top. So now we've got both. We've got the light and only version and the dark and only. So we're going to take this image now that we have it uh, merged together here in this new from visible and we're going to take this and add some color correction to it so that it, we actually get the cool colors that we want. So we have to decide what we want from this. For this one, I'm going to do something kind of like this where it's kind of a bluish green. I like that color combo. So we'll go to colors, curves. And the first thing we'll do, we'll just take this value slider. We're just going to take the anchor point in the middle and just darken it up a little bit because it, it's overly bright and I don't want that. So something kind of like that should look pretty good. And now if we want to make this kind of greenish blue, we'll go to the red channel. We're going to bring this down and you can see that that kind of offsets it with a greenish blue. We'll go to the green channel. We're going to push it up in the highlights at an anchor point, And then we're going to kind of bring it down in the shadows and some of the darker midtones by dragging it below, kind of like that. And already that looks really cool. And go to the blue channel. The blue channel is like the opposite of that. So instead you would bring it down in the highlights because that would force the blue to go yellow and then bring it up in the shadows and some of the darker midtones, kind of like that. And that is how you create that effect. And I really like that color combo. It looks really cool. I'm just going to play with my initial value slider. And instead of just darkening it up, I'm going to add a little bit more contrast to this image just to kind of brighten up some of these highlights. I think that looks cool. We'll hit OK. And already that looks really cool. We just have to sharpen this up a little bit because while these strands, they're not blurry, but they are really smooth. And we want to kind of make them a little bit uh, clearer to define. So we'll go to filters, enhance, sharpen. And we're just going to probably leave the radius alone. We'll just turn the amount up a little bit. 
and we don't want to turn the amount up too far because if we do it ends up making these a really dark definition lines and while that can look cool it looks kind of cell shaded like it's something out of borderlands it's a little bit too much for this uh it kind of makes it look like yarn instead of kind of the the cloud texture that i like that looks kind of like spun cotton candy so we'll just increase the amount just a little bit probably like 1.3 should look pretty good with this and hit okay and that's the basics of how you make this. If you wanted to, you could add some glow to this. We're going to duplicate this layer, set the top one on dodge. And then we'll go into our colors. We'll go to levels. We're just going to kind of crush these a little bit so that only these highlights are actually like blown out. I think that probably looks pretty good. You can see the difference between them. I might have to make that a little bit darker. Some of these are getting blown out a little too much. I think that probably looks okay and hit okay. Take this layer, duplicate this, set this one on screen, go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and just add a quick blur on top of it. Let's see, probably something around 20-ish will work for this image. We can turn off that uh, dodge copy and look at it and see how it came out. I think that looks pretty good. It's pretty subtle. You don't need this step, but I like to have nice, pretty glows on my highlights. So I think that works pretty well. So that image is basically done. I'm just going to take these and merge these together with this so we can see it later. And now that that version is done, let's look at creating this other version that looks like there's a light source behind it. So we'll turn this top layer back on and you can see it right there that looks pretty cool and right now we have a lot of light around the edges we want to darken that up and increase the light in the center so to do that we'll grab our gradient tool we're going to choose a foreground to background and we'll make it white to black we're still on radial we're going to set the blend mode to overlay and then in the center of this image we're just going to kind of click and drag out until we add a vignette around this, something kind of like that should look okay for this. And you see it bumped up the brightness in the center of this and just hit enter to confirm that. And there's still some bright spots here. So I'm going to switch to a foreground to transparent, make sure that my foreground color is black. And then I'm going to reverse the gradient. So it's going transparent to black. And then from the center, I'm just going to click and drag out again but change the blend mode to normal because I want to get rid of these brighter spots that are appearing in these corners. So something kind of like that. If I wanted to, I could kind of adjust the transition between the foreground and the transparency. I think that looks pretty good. Hit enter to confirm that. So let's go ahead and improve this by making the light rays. We'll make a copy of this layer and go to our colors, levels, and we want to crush a lot of the blacks and midtones and just keep the white highlights for the rays. So we'll grab the black shadow slider, crush those, grab the gray midtone slider, kind of crush that, and then grab the white highlight slider and bump that up. So we have these really nice bright areas where our rays will be, kind of like that. Hit OK. Then we can go to filters. Blur, zoom motion blur, and it's already set up to the center of the image correctly. We need to turn the blurring factor up just a little bit more. We're going to use like 0.2 and hit OK. We'll take this layer, we'll duplicate a copy of this layer, go and reshow, and we're going to increase the blur factor on this one. to around, let's see, 0.3, maybe 0.4, and hit OK. And we'll take this and we're going to do the zoom motion blur one more time, around the same thing, around 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and hit OK and wait for that to render out. It might take a second because motion blur always takes forever to render out. 
that looks pretty cool. And the reason we made another copy of this is because as we blur this out, the original source of those lights ends up becoming blurred and too far away from the edge. So we have this first copy here where the blur is, it's there, but it's not as sharp. So we'll combine these two images together and it should give us a proper, like really bright ray and then the fade off to the darker corners. So we'll take this layer. We can set the blend mode on add or screen to see which one looks better. Light and only doesn't look so good because it leaves some really weird edges in here. So there's screen, there's add. Add is probably the better option in this case. I'm actually gonna take the first layer, that first ray layer. I'm gonna duplicate it, set that on add as well. And I'm actually gonna apply the zoom motion blur to that one as well, but not quite as much, probably like mm, 0.225 should work, something like that. So now, there we go, that looks better. So now I've got three different layers with different amounts of the motion blur on it so that it stays bright at the source and then fades off. All right, so there are our light rays, really easy to use. Now we can go ahead and either merge this layer down and colorize it, or we can colorize these separately if we want the rays to be kind of a different color which I'm kind of uh, tempted to do. So I'm going to take this layer. I'm going to make the background here. Let's make this in curves. We're going to make this a nice kind of bright red. Okay, I like that. That's a nice vibrant red. And then we can add our rays on top of it. We're going to take this layer and we can colorize this now. We'll go into curves. And let's see. Well, that's bright red. So let's make the rays of light kind of a nice orangish yellow and there is our light ray set that back on screen and there you go it looks pretty cool i like the uh the color options there and you know again you can take this and play with it you can make this whatever color you want if i just take the hue and saturation slider oh, that actually looks pretty cool make it kind of bright green or maybe bring over a blue the blue actually looks really cool in this maybe a pink or purple lots of different options for this that one actually looks pretty sweet leaving it on the blue there so yeah that's uh that's kind of it that looks really cool i'll merge that down as well and then all i have to do is just crop it down to my screen size and save it and set it as my wallpaper on my computer or on my cell phone pretty easy stuff so there you go a really really easy tutorial for making this abstract weave spiral lattice whatever you want to call it cotton candy swirl i don't even know it's pretty cool pretty easy so there's the first result with the lighten only and then a second result with darken only using some light rays as well using zoom motion blur to create a light source behind all of these textures super cool stuff super easy to do and I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. So that is all that I have to say today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you want to, you can subscribe to my channel because I've got more content coming out. Either way, I'm David Wood for TheBlendMode.com, and I will see you guys next time.